Wickets tumble in eventful day one at Chelmsford. In the final round of the Bob Willis Trophy, Essex knew they would top the South group with a win over Middlesex, who themselves could still catch the reigning county championship title holders should other results go their way. Host Essex remain unbeaten and currently lead the group on 70 points, seven ahead of Kent. Despite losing the toss, it didn't take Essex long to strike in Chelmsford. Just two overs into the day, Middlesex opener Max Holden nibbled at Sam Cook's delivery to fall for a second ball duck. Two balls later and Cook thought he tracked Nick Gubbins, but despite a big appeal, the umpire disagreed. But Gubbins wouldn't survive Jamie Porter's delivery, pinned on the front pads to leave Middlesex in early trouble, now five for two. And before the half-hour mark, Essex had their first point in the bag with a third wicket. An off-cutter from Porter outfoxing Sam Robson to clip middle and off stump to leave the visitors 18 for three. Middlesex's decision to bat was quickly made to look like a poor one, as Cook struck again just before the hour mark. Middlesex skipper Stephen Eskinazi edged to Adam Wheater to leave the away side languishing on 38 for four. Simon Harmer was then brought into the Essex attack, and it didn't take the off-spinner long to strike as Martin Anderson lofted to deep mid-wicket to hand Ferozi Cushy a simple catch and Essex a fifth wicket. Middlesex's slim hopes of progression to the final were dwindling by the over, as Porter grabbed his third wicket of the day. Former Essex loanee Robbie White edged to Alistair Cook to hand the hosts a second bowling bonus point, the score 68 for six heading into lunch. With one foot in the final at Lords, Essex continued their charge as John Simpson fell in the second over after the restart, edging through to Wheater to hand Harmer his second wicket of the match and 25th of the competition. Middlesex all-rounder James Harris was doing his best to limit the damage with back-to-back -back boundaries, before he took a nasty blow from batting partner Blake Cullen at the non-striker's end to leave him needing treatment. When play resumed, Harris stayed well clear of Cullen's next attempt, which, to his relief, cleared the boundary for six to edge the visitors towards 100. Harris looked as though he'd fully recovered and guided Middlesex past the century mark as they continued to counter-attack. But Harris's rearguard effort was brought to an end by a fine delivery from Cook, his third wicket of the day, to trap Harris for 34 as Essex finally broke the eight-wicket partnership. It didn't take long to rattle through the tail end as Cook grabbed his fourth wicket, as Thilan Walalawita was adjudged leg before as Essex bagged a full complement of bowling points in the process. Harmer finished Middlesex off with Blake Cullen the last man out, caught behind with his side all out for 138. Despite losing the toss, momentum now lay firmly with the South Group leaders Essex, as Sam Cook ended on figures with 4 for 27 and Jamie Porter 3 for 55, as Harris ended up top scoring for Middlesex with just 34. Looking to ramp home their early advantage, Alistair Cook and Paul Walter took to the crease, and the early signs were good for the hosts, as Cook helped them to 17 without loss by T. But the former England captain would fail to add to his score, tempted in by Cullen's delivery and caught well by Eskinazi to leave Essex 18 for one. Tom Wesley's poor form with the bat continued. He fell to Tim Murta for just eight, as the host's reply began to falter. They were struggling to contain Murta, and an unsettled Dan Lawrence was the next victim, as he departed for a six-ball duck. All of a sudden, Essex's hopes of building a lead had vanished, as the host lost a fourth wicket in the next over. Cushy trapped by James Harris to blow the game wide open, falling to 44 for four. Runs were proving hard to come by at Chelmsford, and Ryan Tenderscarter rode his luck at times, but he and Paul Walter continued to rebuild for the hosts, before Walter fell seven shy of his half-century off the bowling of Harris to end the partnership of 44 for the fifth wicket. Essex now 87 for five, and the match still very much in the balance. Adam Wheater offered some resistance to bring up 100 as Essex closed on 108 for five, 30 runs behind Middlesex with five wickets in hand as the South Group leaders eye batting bonus points in day two.